Reince Priebus was elected chairman of the Republican National Committee in January of 2011. Before serving his current position, he was the state party chairman in Wisconsin. During his time as RNC chairman, Priebus has raised money for the committee and developed communication strategies for voter outreach. He visited American University to speak to students. Here is my interview with Reince Priebus. What are your predictions for the upcoming election? Um, I, you know, I don't know how it's going to go within our primary. Uh, obviously, it's still pretty early. It's, it's sort of the start, not the finish. Uh, so we'll see how things develop there. I'm ultimately going to support the nominee, of course. I think that any of our candidates are going to be better than where this president has delivered this country. And I think that what we have on our side is a really good debate over how to get our country back on track. I think we've got great, diverse candidates. I think tough primaries are ultimately good for the challenging party. You saw Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama in 08. I mean, listen, I mean, they nearly gouged each other's eyes out, right, through the end of June. They were counting noses all the way to convention. You know, the idea that tough primaries equal somehow bad results, this is not true according to, you know, history. And so I feel great about where we're at. Um, recently we had the State of the Union, the mm -hmm. annual State of the Union address. Um, so what were your thoughts on that? Has he lived up to what he said? Um, what needs to be improved? Yeah, well, first of all, it was the same speech. Uh, you know, we, we came out with the RNC with a video within an hour of that speech. And if you go to GOP.com, uh, anyone watching this can go and see it. And it had over 800,000 hits, by the way, on YouTube. And the reason is, is because if you take his speeches from 2010, 2011, and this year, 2012, it's almost the same speech. So what we did is we took lines from each of the speeches and clipped them out to show in a split screen to the viewer how e each line was almost the same line from each speech. So my view of it was it was a repeat speech. It was lazy. It was boring. Uh, I left thinking I couldn't believe it, to tell you the truth. I mean, he's usually a pretty good speaker, but it was pretty obvious he recycled the same speech. And, he, and, and your, to your question, I mean, he is the person not me. He said, and we'll make this very clear to the American people, that he would cut the deficit in half by the end of his first term, right? And he introduced the biggest structural deficit in the history of the world. He said he would get the debt under control. And he's now accumulated more debt, he's on pace, than every single president before him combined. Now, I can go on and on with one promise after the next, whether it be lobbyists, health care, Wall Street, whatever the case is, he hasn't delivered. The, the message for young people are, is that, you know, this president hasn't delivered on jobs. It's hard to start a career with the path that this president's taken us on. He hasn't delivered on his promises. And that we have to get America back on track. And I think that's a message that works. In the past election in 2008, we saw a really huge role of uh, media, especially social media. Um, what are your thoughts on this upcoming election? Is it going to be equally important, more so? Yeah, I think it's extremely important. And I think the party structure, just so for you and the viewers to know, I mean, our job is to make sure that we have an infrastructure in place. Now, we have a big reach on social media, whether it be Twitter or Facebook or whatever the case may be, YouTube video, email, you know, driving traffic back to GOP.com. We're the first uh, national party to have our own video text messaging program at the RNC. Um, that's really important stuff. But, what's, but I believe also you need a message in a movement. Um, I think Barack Obama had a message in a movement. I didn't agree with that message in movement in 08. But, he, but they also had the infrastructure in place so that when all of those things come together, I mean, you hit that social media jackpot. We're doing the same thing on our side. We're putting together the infrastructure every day at the RNC. And I think we're going to have the message in the movement in, in 2012, this year, so that when that movement hits, uh, as we get our nominee in place and this becomes a, a, a race between Obama and our nominee, we'll have the infrastructure in place to make sure that we hit uh, that social media jackpot. And, and I think we're, we're well on our way. And is the social media, especially you mentioned the text messaging, is that an attempt to target younger voters? Well, I think it's a lot of things. I mean, I, I, I don't buy into this idea that the only way to get to younger people or younger voters or college voters is through texting and Facebook and Twitter. I, I think it's all of that, that's for sure. But I think, you know, now people at all ages are using this social media. I just think it's a matter of, do, if, do you understand how to communicate with people around this country, no matter what age group they are, including college kids. And if you understand that, 
then you need to have a message that can transcend into not just mainstream media, cable, internet, social media, texting, all of the above. You have to be there. If a Republican does become president for the next term or possibly two terms, what specific things do you hope that they will achieve? What needs to be accomplished right away? Well, I think that we need to get really serious in this country about our entitlement problems, our debts, our deficits, and our spending problems in this country. I think Paul Ryan has really led a very serious debate in this country. You saw the last Republican budget that was passed that really dealt with the 10-year debt window facing America. And I know this can seem kind of like you know, esoteric, comedy, but it's so serious to America that when you're on the verge of spending more money paying the, your the interest on your national debt than all of your payments of Social Security combined, I mean, you are playing with the future of America. And in your opinion, um, who will be the best Republican candidate to beat Obama <laughs> this fall? Well, you and a lot of reporters ask that question, <laughs> and I'll tell you, it, I, I'm not going to, I can't pick a, a, a person. I'm, you're smart to ask it, that's what you should do. Uh, but, you know, I'm going to support whoever the nominee is. I, I really do think that any one of our nominees will be better than this president. And here's why I say that. I mean, it seems like a. You know, well, of course he's going to say that. But here's the deal. The president has already shown us the results of his presidency. And what are the results of his presidency? The results are that we have unemployment at levels that we haven't had, sustained unemployment at levels we haven't had in decades in this country, spending that we've never seen in decades in this country, debts and deficits that haven't been addressed, um, lobbyists working in the White House. He said he'd get health care costs under control. Remember the big Obamacare? Well, guess what? Health care costs have risen on families. It costs families $2,500 more a family. So none of these things that he promised he would deliver on have, have actually happened. So that's why our candidate is going to be better, because we know what was delivered by this president and hasn't been good for, the, for this country.